this one time, she, Elder, Elder Epley, matter of fact, he, he said, I told him, this man's a hoot. You gotta, you gotta get around him. He's telling the story one time, a lady came and says, I'm leaving. She said, I, I'm looking for the perfect church. He goes, well, do me two favors when you find it. She goes, what's that? He goes, call me and tell me where it's at because I want to come see it too. He goes, okay, I can do that. And he just left it hanging. He goes, well, well, what's the second thing? He goes, well, since you asked, don't join it because it'll cease to be perfect when you do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Is anybody here perfect? No, sir. Right on. That's right. I've got you. Man, I, you know what? When I stand before him, he says, well done, not faithful, sir. I'll, stop, I'll cease saying I'm not perfect anymore. When I, I'll be complete on that day. Right. Hey, I need the church. I need preaching. I need elders in my life. I need sons of God. I need testimonies. I, I need songs. I need young men like he's been getting up for the last two services I've been in. And, and reading scripture and saying a few words, singing some songs. I need that. Yes, I do. I do. I do. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God, thank God. Well, change the course here tonight. I thought I was going to do something else, but I'm going to go get a different, different mind tonight. Glad I got it. Amen. Book of Acts, 16th chapter. We'll read some very familiar portions of scripture here. This is going to be nothing new. There's nothing new in our son, according to the wise man, according to your Bible. Amen. Amen. If you look for something new, keep looking. There's nothing new in this side of heaven. Amen. 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 So the 16th chapter, the book of Acts, going to start reading at verse 19. Reading down through verse 35. Acts chapter 16, verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, drew them into the marketplace, unto the rulers, and they brought them to the manuscript, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. The manuscripts ran off their clothes, commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang unto God, sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every one's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prisoner doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we all hear. Then he called for a light, sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them in the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes. And he was baptized, he and all of his straightway. And when they had brought them unto his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. And when it was day, the main sent the servant saying, Let these men go. Yeah. <laughs> Let these men go. Yeah. No Amen. Way. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight about at midnight. Amen. Everybody say at midnight. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated here tonight. Amen. Here came Paul and Silas into the city and they began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They began to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. They began to tell them to repent of their sins. And they began to name their sins. They began to tell people to change the way they worshiped and turn away from false gods. And you got to understand that, you know, the biggest way to make people mad is getting their pocketbook. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Cost them money or, or get between them and a, and a job or something. And, and this is what's going on. They begin to teach customs. Uh, we heard, you know, the story about Diana, the God that they worshipped. Uh, and they begin to turn people away and, and people quit coming to, to, to people who bought by God. So, you know, they had statues. Uh, they had idols. You, you come and they made these and they sold them to you for money. Yeah. And what kind of worship is that? I got to pay you to make my God so I can worship. Uh, but that's, that, that goes on today. Uh, people, they may come to church, all the church wants is money. Uh, but they think nothing about going to the Super Bowl and paying $500,000 for one seat for a few hours. Uh, and paying skyrocket prices for a motel. Uh, and jumping up and down and screaming hard. And then their team loses when it's all over. And they go home disappointed. Uh, friend, I got news for you. God's plans a whole lot cheaper. Amen. Yes, 
so these, these people got mad because Paul and Silas was preaching this gospel and it was costing people some positions and it was deflating their egos and it was costing them some money and they saw the handwriting on the wall friend. hey we don't like these guys and so they grabbed them and they brought them up for trial in front of everybody and everybody got mad and they thrust them in prison and they just lock them up and they book them and read them the Miranda rights and they give them one phone call and they get a lawyer now they thrust them into the innermost part of the prison and then when they got them in the innermost part of the prison they bound them and chained them and friend if you know anything about the Roman customs of prisons they were bound and chained their hands were tied to their feet they were bent over in a not a very comfortable position and they could have been there
tell moms because I stay as far away 